Tonight's boxing action proudly brought to you by Madison Sport. And thank you for joining us here in the red corner this evening as we look at that man, John Perai from New Zealand. And he has a challenge ahead of him against Australia's Glenn Azar making his professional debut tonight. Glenn from the Fighting Fit Gym in Toowoomba. And uh, Johnny Perai all the way across the Tasman. It's not his first visit here to, uh, to Australia. He made his professional debut in Townsville in January in 2006 with a, a loss, but uh, he's a game-willing customer. And uh, by golly, uh, Brian Kerwin, if he wanted to mug me in the street, I'd give him my wife, my car, my money and everything. Because uh, as we watch Glenn Azar, trainer of champions, this young man, trainer of Mick Shaw, the former Australian junior welterweight champion, trainer of Matt Shaw, and a very, very nice young guy outside the ring. We'll hear a bit more about Johnny Perai but in a minute, but uh, we read his resume and it said right, the right, baddest man in Auckland, we so here we go, we'll find out a, bit, a bit, little bit more about him. Making his way here tonight by way of Auckland, New Zealand, this bad man has fought in cages, in rings and bars and anywhere else he chooses. With four professional fights to his credit, he's come over the ditch to take back an Aussie scalp. Ladies and gentlemen, wearing the black trunks with the gold piping, he's rough and tough and ready to go. From the land of the long white cloud, stand back, he's about to explode. Here's Johnny, Johnny Perai. And making his uh, professional debut, standing opposite in the blue corner. This man is no stranger to the ring. The Queensland and Australian boxing, having trained Australian champion Mick Shaw and his brother Matt Shaw in their professional career. With 13 wins from 17 fights as an amateur, tonight he's putting it all on the line. He's donating his purse to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, ladies and gentlemen, wearing the blue trunks. He's going to climb his own personal Everest. Hailing from the garden city of Toowoomba, please welcome Glenn the Razor Azar. What an interesting thing to do in your life, Brad, as each was a trainer for a long time, and yeah. then all of a sudden he said, I'm going to have a fight, and uh, the boys he trains are in this corner. Ladies so they've reversed yeah, the roles. It's, it's, it's good to see, you know, that's... One of the one of the nicer things to see in our sport, where uh, where you know two of the nicest young guys in professional boxing, in Mick and Matt Shaw, and uh, and of course uh, Glenn Azara. You know, it's good to see the reverse roles. Now they'll be able to say, well, listen, this is what you do to us in the corner. We're going to do exactly the same back as we have a listen to referee Alan Simpson. Protect yourselves at all times. Shake hands. Back to your corner. And I'm certainly not surprised to hear that Glenn Azar, or Razor as he's affectionately known, as he uh, just touches the glove of his lovely, lovely daughter, Alyssa, and um, is donating his purse to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He is just a one. very decent human being, Glenn Azar. First punch in anger as a professional. And, and it he hit the mark. <laughs> right hand on right the button. Hand, right on the button. I wouldn't do that too often. Johnny Perai might get a bit angry, Glenn. <laughs> Certainly the height and reach advantage is with our man in the blue. The guy from the Garden City, Toowoomba, Glenn Azar. And doesn't he look like he's done the work, uh, Brian Kerwin? He was 104 kilos and he said he was going through a bit of a struggling patch in his life where he couldn't get the motivation to train and uh, he rang me up and said can we get a fight and I said yes you can and it, all of a sudden he's dropped down to 92 kilos so there's a 10 kilo loss in That's itself a, which yeah. is fantastic. A great effort by Glenn Azar as he uh, catches John Perai coming in with a wild right hand. Break. It's going to be a little untidy I'd say uh, Johnny Perai is one of those guys he just likes to get down and get dirty. Barroom brawls back Oh, there's a big right hand right under the rib cage uh, of Glenn Azar, and that certainly caught his attention. I think that would have won most barroom brawls, that punch I'm there. sure it would have. <laughs> Glenn Azar has a look of uh, shock on his face. He's realised what he's in for what at the I moment. Done? What have I done? We're coming to you tonight from the Kedron Wavell Services Club as Glenn Azar gets clubbed with another big right hand and Johnny Perai decides to get down and get oh, dirty oh, with him. Oh. The baddest man from Auckland has wrestled him to the ground. Uh, now, now the baddest man in our refereeing is uh, about to give him the a few rules that he needs to adhere to. Alan Simpson, he won't take any, uh, any rubbish from John Perai. 
we could call him the bad man in black, Alan Simpson. A very fine referee at that, and he'll give both guys a, a real chance. There's a beautiful left hand, and we saw the... Uh, oh, there's a big clubbing right hand by Perai. Certainly the power punches this round have been with John Perai, right. but, uh, but the work rate has been with Glenn Azar, which you would expect being taller, fitter, leaner. Johnny Perai took this fight on short notice, and, uh, and Glenn actually accepted the fight, not having seen John Perai before, not knowing anything about him. We had a planned, an, a planned opponent for him, and uh, that all fell through in the last minute. And with yeah. so much money to be raised for charity, Glenn said, I don't mind. Get anyone, get someone. I want to be in there, and we want to do this thing for Make-A-Wish Foundation. That's wonderful. A decent human being, this guy. If you don't know Glenn Azar... Let me tell you, trust my judgment, he is one decent guy and he's not doing this for Glen Azar, he's doing it for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and uh, it's a very admirable thing that he's doing and uh, hats off to you Glen Azar, whether you win, lose or draw this fight, you've got my respect my friend. I told the viewers before once Brad a story about Glen Azar and his four friends, they sat around one Christmas holidays with nothing much to do and they said let's run from Townsville to Brisbane and try and raise money along the way. So they stopped in at every town and said, this is what we're doing. We're, we're running from, for charity. And they raised over $20,000 in their two-week break and then just, and found a charity and gave it to them. Isn't that amazing? As we see the end of the first professional round in professional boxing for Glen Azar, that man in the blue corner. Brad, are you going to do him any favours? Did he win his first professional round or not? Glenn, I'm so sorry. I don't think you did. I think the, the bigger punches, the power punches came from John Perai. Well, the work rate certainly came from Glenn Azar. So uh, I think next time I see Glenn, I'll be doing an exit stage left around the back of the change rooms. <laughs> he might want to fight me next. <laughs> I won my last fight by 100 metres. <laughs> Let's see if we can listen into the corner of Johnny Perai. With Raymond Wolf in the corner. Not much happening in that corner, Bradley. What, uh, what would you suggest uh, happen in Glenn's corner? What would his instructions well, I think be? They would have been saying, Mick Shaw just would have been saying, now listen, you know, take it steady. Don't stand there and trade with this bloke. He's obviously a brawler and he can punch. Don't, get, don't fight his fight. Fight your fight. You've got the height. You've got the reach. You're in your own back yard. Don't stand there and fight with him. Just box. Use that left hand. Don't wrestle with him like they're wrestling there because I don't think he can win. If he right. fights that fight, he's going to get back into John Perai's um, strengths. He needs to fight to his own strengths. Big, long left lead is what we need. Glenn's moving around to the right way. He's moving around to his right. Now he's moving around to the left where that big right hand came. That's a beautiful left lead. There it is. He gets under the right. And now he smothers Perai, which nullifies his own, which nullifies Johnny Perai's effectiveness. But I guess if he gets in close enough to wrestle, he's in close enough to be hit by Johnny Perai as well, isn't well, he? Well, he is, but what he's doing, he's doing it very well. So he's, he's, uh, as he cops a oh, big punch to the rib cage. Okay, John Perai says, I won't hit him around the kidney, but I hope that what I did do hurt. <laughs> But we look at, we're looking at a much more balanced uh, Glenn Azar. He made him miss and made him pay with his own little short right. And you notice there he's not actually trying to out-wrestle Perai. Perai just looks like he's just twisted his ankle a little bit there. Referee just giving him the benefit of the doubt. Let him box on. Good sportsmanship again from Glenn Azar. He could have jumped around Glenn Azar. Ah, again he makes him miss with a big right hand. Makes him pay again with his own right. As he walks him back into his own blue corner. Puts a bit of a wrestle on him, mate. Gives that leg a workout. He's making him miss, making him pay. Short little punches. Trying to get out, use his reach. There's a lot of things going through the mind of Glenn at the moment. It's his first fight. He doesn't want to lose his professional debut. He doesn't want to look bad. Again, he wrestles him to the ground. And I think Perai's struggling with that left ankle of his. The referee asks him if he wants to go on. I think he's struggling a little bit. No, I think he's going to wave it away, Alan Simpson. He's twisted his ankle to the point where he, uh, he just can't go on. Well, there we go. The Razor has picked up his first professional victory. Not in a way that I think he would have liked, Brad. No, I don't think so. But look, you know, you, we saw where he twisted it. I think he's rolled his ankle. Oh, actually, he didn't twist it. I think he's rolled his ankle, and it's very painful. And, of course, with every punch he got hit by Glenn Azar, the ankle got sore. So I think that... Uh, and Glenn, the ever-experienced uh, trainer and now professional boxer, right, used it to his advantage uh, and wrestled him around a bit on his sore leg. Put your hands together for a game he beat him inside, he beat him outside. 
He's hurt the calf muscle. He beat him with ring craft, mate. Ladies he and gentlemen, did. one minute, 58 into the second round. The red corner retired due to injury. The decision going to the blue corner, Glenn Fraser Complete satisfaction and relief for Glenn Azar as he makes his professional debut successfully. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Johnny Parai. He looks a little tender He was doing on that a great arm, job in there. Leg. Only injury to that calf muscle stopped it. It would have been a good four rounder, I can tell you. It might make for a good return, I think. Uh, okay, Brian. let's talk I think to Glenn Azar, Azar has a very bright future in the ranks of professional <laughs> boxing, and uh, I can't wait until he steps up a bit, mate. Well, it's a good start as we see Alyssa and the team Azar from the Fighting Fit Gymnasium in Toowoomba, and they are very well known up there. If you come from anywhere near the Garden City, you will know fighting All right, fit. Our Let's winner, have a listen Glenn to Azar, Glenn Azar as he gentlemen. chats with Peter Rukas. Now listen. now listen, I'm used to seeing you in the corner looking after Shaw. Not in here in the boxing ring now. What's going on? I said to you, is this a midlife crisis or what? Yeah, yeah it is a bit. A bit of a midlife crisis. And yeah, Mick had a, a tough couple of fights at the end of last year. And uh, I've asked him just to have a bit of a spell. And he said, he'll only do it if I jump in the ring. So here I am. <laughs> so Mick Shaw challenged you, did he? <laughs> But, mate, um, you went well out there. I tell you what, you had to keep away from him. He's a pretty tough customer, but um, obviously uh, disappointing to see the fight end that way, an injury. Yeah, look, I was looking forward to going the distance, to be honest, and um, I was just starting to enjoy myself. Uh, the first round, he rattled me with a couple of good right hands he could punch. But, um, you know, this is a pain sport. I love getting hit, so it doesn't worry me. OK, fair enough. You love the pain. All right. And, of course, you're doing it for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is a, a tremendous cause, Glenn. Yeah, look, this is a one-off for me at um, nearly 35. I won't be here again. And we've got a heap of people from Toowoomba and Brisbane that have come to support us. Um, we've raised about $9,000. Well, I see all your mates over here. There's Procast. Prowsey's over there. McNabb Constructions, the boys are over here. And uh, Action International down here as well. Who else have we got? Uh, Executive Excellence are here as well, headed by uh, Al Forsyth, Johnny Miles. Um, if you ever want to go on an adventure somewhere, they're the guys to go with. Well, they're the guys that are going on that Kokoda Trail, aren't they? Yeah, beautiful. I think they're up to number 50 or somewhere around there. Yeah, I've done it a few times. <laughs> well, listen, I don't know. I reckon the Kokoda Trail might be a bit easier than getting in here doing professional boxing. Yeah, mate, look, the nerves were a killer. I've trained really hard, and I'd just like to thank uh, Aaron Hogman for putting a lot of time in with me. Um, you know, we're doing two and three sessions And congratulations to Glen Azar on a terrific victory here tonight at the Kedron uh, Wavell Services Club that was taken back on February 16, and uh, it was a good uh, effort for Glen, raising a lot of much-needed money for charity. Tonight, I hope you've enjoyed our show in the red corner, and we saw two of Australia's rising stars in Andrew Sundance Gosden with a successful win. Next week, I hope you'll join us because we've got a couple of the other rising stars. Jim Savage, a former Queensland champion and Australian title challenger, he takes on one arguably his biggest test in okay, one of the Filipino gone. powerhouses, Glenn, uh, Rolando Hironko from uh, Sydney. And he's that's all well. to look forward to. And we hope you'll join us Queensland next week boxing, on In The Red Corner. On behalf of Mr Boxing Queensland's champion. Brian Kerwin, I'm Brad Vicali. Thank you. We'll see you again in the red corner. Tremendous for Queensland Boxing and Australian Boxing.